Hello, welcome to a special Go.js tutorial. This video will explain and demonstrate one way to create a single page Angular application using Go.js. Using Go.js requires programming in JavaScript and familiarity with HTML and CSS. This video assumes you understand the basics of Go.js, which are covered in the Go.js beginner videos series. This video also assumes you are familiar with basic Angular concepts like components and data binding. We're going to explore one way to build a single page application with Go.js and Angular. All code is available in a download link in the description. First, let's discuss what we're going to build. We're using the Go.js org chart editor sample, which can be found on gojs.net. Our goal is to integrate that sample in an Angular project, along with a very simple inspector that will show editable fields for the selected nodes properties. In Angular terms, we're going to have three components, our overarching app component, which holds our other two components, a diagram component, which will display our org chart, and an inspector component, which will allow for us to see and edit the name and parent of the node selected in our diagram. Let's quickly go over the flow of data we'll need to establish. All these components will need access to the model of our Go.js diagram. So we'll define that model in our app component along with its starting node data, and bind it to Angular input properties for our two child components. We'll need to know when a node is clicked and update the inspector accordingly. So we'll have an Angular event emitter in our diagram component that emits a node clicked event back up to the app component. When this event is received by the app component, from there, we'll set a property of our inspector component called selected node. So the inspector knows which node to display for. Inside our inspector component, when the user changes the name input value, we'll make sure the diagram's model data is updated accordingly. We're now going to build this application, so if everything isn't clear yet, it will be soon. First, we'll create a new Angular application with the ng-new command. We don't need application routing, and we'll just use plain CSS for our styling. After it's created, from inside the project directory, We'll install Go.js with npm i Go.js. Clear the default app component template. Generate the diagram component with ng g c diagram. Clear the default template for the diagram component, then replace it with a div element, which will house our Go.js diagram. We'll also style it now. You'll notice I copied and pasted the styling. For many of the plain Go.js or basic web development things, I'll be copying and pasting the code to keep this video from getting too long. But remember, all this code is available from the link in the description box. We'll now add the diagram component to the app components template using the default app diagram selector. We can now see, when we load the page, there is a styled div element. Next, we'll define the diagram that will go in that div. We'll do this inside the diagram component.ts file. First, import go.js. Next, we'll define the often used go.graphobject.make function as the dollar sign. Then, define a class property diagram. Since the diagram will need our div, we'll start defining it inside the ng after view init lifecycle hook rather than the ng on init lifecycle hook so that way we can be sure the div exists. So, inside ng after view init, we'll set this diagram to a new Go.js diagram within the div with the ID my diagram div. If we load the page, we can see there's a Go.js diagram inside our div. Notice the blue outlining when the diagram is clicked on, but there's nothing in it yet. We'll add nodes into our diagram by setting the diagram.model to a new tree model with node data. However, we don't want to just hard code this data inside our diagram component since we want to be able to manipulate model data from our yet to be made inspector component. Therefore, it makes sense to define our model in the app component, the component that houses both diagram component and inspector component, and bind that model to some angular input property in its child components. Let's do this now. Inside app component, define class property model as a new go.tree model with a bunch of node data. Now, in diagram component, define an angular input property called model. Make sure you import input from the angular slash core library. We'll bind these together 
by going to our app component HTML template and add this model binding to the app diagram selector. Finally, in our diagram components ng after view init function, we'll set this diagram.model to this.model, our input property we received via Angular data binding from our app component. Now, the model of our diagram in diagram component is bound to the model we set in its parent component, app component. If we load the page, we see this is the case, since our diagram has a bunch of nodes in it now. But it looks bad. We're going to clean this up quickly by assigning our diagram a tree layout and defining a node template. I'm just copying and pasting this right now since it's pure Go.js code, but feel free to download the code in the link below and take your time studying it. Additionally, I'm putting some headshot photos in the Angular Assets directory. When we reload the page, things look better now that we have a layout and a node template defined. Okay, now let's make the inspector, which will allow for us to see and edit the name property of one of these nodes. We'll do this with the command nggc inspector. We need to make sure that when we use the inspector to edit a node's name property, that change affects the model data in our app component. Before we can do that, we need to let the inspector component know which node, if any, is selected in the diagram. To do this, in our diagram component, we must make an angular output property called node clicked, which will be a new angular event emitter instance. Make sure output and event emitter are imported from the angular slash core library. Now, we need to use this event emitter whenever a node or no node is selected. To do so, in ng after view init, Below where we define our diagram and node template, we'll add a Go.js diagram listener for the changed selection event. Inside the listener, we'll get the first selected node in the diagram, then use our angular event emitter output property by calling this.nodeclicked.emit. We'll emit the event with a single parameter, which is the selected node. Okay, so now our diagram component emits an event whenever the selection changes, but how do we catch that event and do something with it? We must go to the app component HTML template and bind diagram components node clicked event with some function that app component will use to handle that event. Let's bind it to a function we haven't made yet called set selected node. Don't forget to include the angular event parameter, which in our case will be the node that is currently selected. Now in app component, Let's define a new class property called selected node. Then we'll write the set selected node function, which takes a node as a parameter. Since this function is being called when our node clicked event is emitted to app component from diagram component, this node parameter of set selected node will always be the node selected in our diagram. We'll keep this function simple. Just set this dot selected node to node. Finally, we must pass this selected node to the inspector component. To do so, in the app component HTML template, we'll bind a property of the inspector component, also called selected node, to the selected node property of app component. We'll then define this property in our inspector component as an angular input property. Make sure you've imported input from the angular slash core. Now, let's replace the auto-generated template for inspector component. We'll keep it simple for now. Let's make a div element. Inside that element, we'll use angular interpolation to show the name of our currently selected node by a call to selectednode.data.name. We'll go one step further and use the angular ngif structural derivative to ensure we only show this div if the selected node is not null or undefined. Now, if we load the page, we see that if we click on a node, the inspector appears showing us the name of the currently selected node. Now, we want to allow the inspector to make changes to the diagram's model, so let's give it a model input property and bind it to the app component's model property in the app component HTML template, as we did for the diagram component's model property. Additionally, in our inspector component, we're going to want a data property to more easily update selected node's model data. Finally, we're going to give inspector a new property, underscore selected node, which will be used in conjunction with a getter and setter for the inspector component's selected node input property. This is done to avoid infinite looping when we define our setter function. 
for selected nodes getter function will just return underscore selected node. For selected nodes setter function, we'll look at the node that it receives as a parameter and check if it exists. If yes, we'll set underscore selected node to that node, then set the inspector's data.name and data.parent properties to be what they are on the past node's data. If the past node is null, which will happen if the diagram selection has changed and no node is selected, we set underscore selected node to null. If you remember back to our ng if statement for inspector, you'll see this makes it so the inspector does not appear if no node is selected. Next, we must update the inspector's HTML template. We're going to use a form, so let's import the Angular Forms module from Angular slash forms in our app module and make sure it is declared in the imports array. Then, we'll go to the inspector's HTML template and change the div element to a form element. Inside that element, we'll provide two labeled named input elements, one for name and one for boss. On each of these input elements, we'll have an ng model binding to a property of our inspector's data object, either data.name or data.parent. We'll also add some CSS now. Now if we load the page, then click on a node, we see the inspector is populated with the name and boss ID number of the selected node. If no node is selected, the inspector does not appear. Finally, we need to make it so when the inputs of our inspector are changed and the form is submitted, the model of our diagram updates. Let's go back to our inspector HTML template and add a submit button to our form. Then, where the form element is declared, bind the ng submit event to a function called onCommitForm, which we must now define in our inspector component class. Create the function onCommitForm. Inside it, we will simply set properties of the selected node in model data. To do so, we'll call this.model.set. Then, for its arguments, provide this.selected.data for the node data to be edited, then either name or parent for the data property to update, then this.data.name or this.data.parent. Ensure this is done inside a GoJS transaction, so changes are recorded in the undo manager. This works because we used an ng model binding on the inputs of our form. Inspectors data.name and data.parent will automatically change as the inputs are changed. This will make it so when the form is submitted, the model that is bound to both inspector component and diagram component, which is held in app component, will be updated, so the changes will be immediately apparent on the diagram component, even though we are editing in the inspector component. Load the page, and we can see that this is the case. If I click on Saul Wellingood's node, the inspector populates with his name and parent key. If I change his name, then commit the form, it changes in the diagram. If I change the value of the boss input to 6, which we can see is the ID number of Al Ligori, then commit the form, Saul becomes Al's subordinate. Of course, we could allow the inspector to show or edit even more properties of nodes, but for now, this is enough. That's it for this video. All code is available in the description below. Head over to gojs.net to see hundreds of samples, read more about GoJS features on the intro pages, or peruse the full API documentation. Sign up for an unlimited free trial, and you'll get 30 days of developer-to-developer -developer support for free.